So what we have to do is we have to open your browser and we have to search for Steam. There is Steam CMD. And then we want to click on Steam Valve Developer Community. And then we want Windows. I'm um, not sure about um, Linux way, so you'll probably have to read this. But we're going to do a Windows. We was going to do a Windows. Yeah, we had. We're going to do a Windows version. So there's the link for Windows. So we want this. Download it. And then we want to drag a zip to the desktop. And even though we've already got one, I think. Oh, did I delete it? I deleted it. Right, so. We want to create a folder called Steam CMD. And then we want to open this zip or RAR or Windows compressed file. Um, you might need to download WinRAR or Windows zip to open it, but it should open in normal Windows without any software. But anyway, this is what you should see inside steamcmd.exe. So grab this and drag it into here. It only takes a couple of seconds. Let me delete that. We don't need it. And then in here, we should have our application, our .exe file to run. So run that. Um, we can close that for now. We don't need it. Let that do its thing. So what we need now is we can either log in or just log in anonymously. So we need to log in anonymously. So there we go. After all that's done, what it does is it actually puts the normal files in that you see in your normal Steam directory. So you should, when some installed, you should see Steam apps and all that, but it's not installed yet. So we'll log in here anonymously. Anonymous. Copy and paste the login anonymous and press enter. And then it'll log in and go, yes, it's successful. Now, so we need seven days to die dedicated server files, so you can Google it. Um, seven days to die dedicated server steam ID. And as you can see, it's 29442. But um, that's kind of air for the stuff we need. But I will link it in the bottom. So what you'll need to type here is app app underscore line underline underscore update space 294420 like before. I will put it below so you can copy it. Put it in there, copy paste, press enter. And then that'll download and extract everything. And then that's good to go. Now we're going to close that because we don't need it for now. We'll put that to the side. Let that do its thing. And we need to go in this folder. So as you can see, the game's installing. It's good to go. And it's made a Steam apps folder. So you go in here. And then we go in common. And there you can see it's made 7 days to die dedicated server. So we want to go in here. Once it's done it and extract it, it's probably put it in the download. Yeah, it's put it there. So we'll wait till that's done. It shouldn't take long. Now I think seven days to die requires some, um, let me shall we look. I think it needs some Visual C++ components. So you might have to download Microsoft Visual C++ 2015 to 2022. And there's other ones as well. There's 10, 15 and stuff like that. Maybe if it doesn't start, I'm not sure. So is this nearly done? 74%, 76. Now the time of this video I am downloading, is it version, um, is it alpha 21 or is it beta 21? It's version 21. 84%, let's get in there, yay. That's pretty cool. Okay, so another thing you need to download before we get carried away is Note++. Plus Plus. Brilliant um, editing tool. So it's Note++. Plus Plus Plus. And then you want to go onto this website here. Download the waste. Um, agree to that. 
and then I think it's that link there. Oh, so I'll try it. What did I just click on? Careful, because it's a spam website. It's full spam. Don't click that. Let's go back. Right, let's click that again. Okay, you have to be careful when downloading this crap. Because you will get some spam. Is there a proper download link? Right, let's... What's this here? All the versions... Let's try this one. Alternative notepad download. What does this one do? This one looks a bit more legit. Here it does. Um... I think I'll click on it for you guys to make sure it's... Yeah, this might be the actual real one. Yeah, it's safe. It looks like a dodgy spam one. Um, so, pff, click that dodgy link. And make sure it says MPP 8.19 installer. And then install that. And then if there's any... It's fully installed now. So we can close that. It takes a couple of seconds to load. Right, so let's start from the beginning again. So here, from that folder we made, Steam apps, and then common, and then you've got your server. So what we want to do is, you have two options here. You can leave it in there, and then log in anonymous again and run that apps command, and it will automatically update it for when it goes out of date. Or if you're not planning on updating it because you've got tons of mods, you can just copy this and paste it somewhere else. But I'm going to leave it in the directory for my video. And the first thing we need to do is we need to go to the server config. Before we run the server, we need to edit with Notepad++. This is what it looks like when you're just using a normal Notepad. Looks a bit messy. Um, but this is what it looks like after you've installed Edit with Notepad++. As you can see, everything's blue that's not errored and errored, and everything is in red that won't load. So it's just easier to work out and run. So we're going to change the name because I'm sure other people have set up new servers and called it the same. My host, whatever. We're going to call it my test game. That's for now. And we're going to click save. Right, so we're going to put a password on it so we don't want people on it while we're launching it. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to your region. Um, this is important because this will show exactly where your server is going to show. So if you want it to show in, let's see, I'm in UK, so I'm, I'm thinking probably Europe. So we want to make sure you keep it in between there. So we're going to paste that to Europe. And obviously, language is English, unless you're French. I'm watching this and want a French server, then change it to French. Um, you've got your server port, leave on default, unless you've got five running at the same time. Uh, server visibility is to keep it public. And stuff like that. So we're going to change another setting here that will help people download your map a lot faster. So the maximum it can do is 1,300 1, anyway. So we're going to go over here and we're going to set this to that so the map will download faster. That's that. Right, everything else you'll have to Google and find out yourself. Um, but there is one thing you need to make sure. If the control panel is enabled, make sure you put a password on it. As you can see here, the telnet port is enabled. So we want a password on that because that's like a direct admin to restart your server, ban people and stuff like that. So we're just going to put some up there to stop people from logging in. And then we're going to scroll down to this bit here. Let's scroll up. Um, user data folder, save game folder. Right, this is important because this will put all your saved game and your map world, your map save and your save players in an odd place for you to get to it. And you don't want that. You want it probably in... You want it somewhere else. So I'm going to put it in the main directory so I know where it is. And we're going to make a new folder called save. 
Also, it puts your mod folder in here so you can load mods as well. Um, so we're going to go in here and we're going to click this and we're going to click that, click that and copy that to copy the full path to where it is. And then let's have a look. Then we're going to go here, paste that there and paste that there. Click save. And that's where that save folder is. Right, as you can see, this bit is not blue. That's because it's got this in front of it. So we need to take this off. There we go. Now, as you can see, it's not in line. So we'll put that in line a bit more. Oops, wrong button. Keeps it tidy. Now at the end of it, they've added arrows as well. So we want this like... Uh, we want to get rid of these. There we go. And that should run that and put everything where we want it. All good. Also, if you've got mods, this wants to be false for some mods. And then you've got your map name and that. I'm not going to mess with that. I'm just going to leave it at the default one for now because we're going. We need to fire it up pretty fast to show you everything. Um, and everything else you can mess around with at your leisure. You won't break it. Apart from the day cycle. If you change it from 7 to 3 or loot cycle or whatever. Then you might do. Who knows. Right. So now that's done that. What we need to do is. We need to look at this. Edit this. Make sure everything looks okay in there. Which I have no idea. Because I don't know how to do it. And I think this auto checks if there's an update. I'm not sure. But anyway, let's run it. So you want to run this start dedicated. And you'll click on the window. And there is your proper terminal. Click on this window, press a key, press a key, get rid of it. And there is your seven days to die server loading up. And it'll halt on shapes for a second. And then I'll start loading. With it being a default map, it, it won't load. Uh, well, it'll load as fast as this. If it is um, Darkness Falls mod or other big 10k maps, it'll load a lot slower. On the default map without any mods, you can use 8 gig of RAM. If you're using Darkness Falls or anything else, you're going to need at least 10 to 16 gig of RAM. You can still play it, but it'll be laggy. It'll load up pretty slow. As you can see, it's loaded more files into the directory. And if we look in our save folder, you can see the map save profiles. And we now have a server admin file. So it's all in one nice, beautiful place. And when you get this IP address at the bottom, that means that it's finished and it's done. And if you look, there's no errors and it seems to be um, all good. Now, I think with the new, what was it, Alpha 21 or whatever it was, um, they put the mods folder where this saves. So in here, you'll want to put a mods folder. And any mods you download off the internet, put in there and it should run. And um, that's how you install and run a 7 days to die server. So if you need any more help, let me know in the comments. And uh, I hope that's helped you out.